Good Wednesday to you. Welcome to Life Applicating Word, our weekly Bible study. We're going to go back to the book of First Chronicles, chapter number four, uh, verses nine and ten. First Chronicles, chapter number four, verses nine and ten. Uh, the Bible reads, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him in sorrow. Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou would bless me indeed, enlarge my coast, and thine hand might be with me, that thou wouldest keep me from all evil, that, they, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Now, this is a continuation from Sunday's service. There were some points uh, that I really wanted to bring out, but the Holy Spirit uh, guided us in a different direction. So I told the church on Sunday that I wanted to go back and uh, just briefly touch on uh, some of the things that I, I really want to stress and reiterate about uh, this, this once popular prayer of Jabez. And I think the first thing that I want to express and explain on today is that just because the popularity died out does not mean the power of the prayer died out. It doesn't mean that the principles of this prayer died out and that I think that we, we, it would benefit us to continue, along with the model prayer that we talked about, it would benefit us to continue to, to pray these principles that Jabez prayed. As I said on Sunday, and I want to say on today, and I want to stress this point as well, that I, I do not believe that this is a prosper, prosperity prayer. Uh, I know that, you know, prosperity preaching had one time, you know, had just taken off and everyone was getting excited about this prayer of Jabez, relating it uh, to God, just, you know, granting them a, a grand life of prosperity and riches and wealth and things of that nature. And so I want to bring out the point and the fact that, in my opinion and in my studies, and, and this is this is my, my, my educated opinion, that this was not a, a prayer aimed at prosperity. What Jabez is praying is a, a prayer of God's protection and provision. God did not promise each and every person a life of, uh, you know, diamonds and gold and wealth, cars, houses, and things of that nature that we it was, uh, you know, hopefully at one point we've gotten over it, but hopefully at one point was, uh, you know, all wrapped up in uh, when we think of God and we think of prayers. But Jabez is praying that God will give him provisions and God will protect him uh, concerning the promises that God had already made to Jabez. So on today, and uh, very briefly, because I have a busy day, but on today, uh, very briefly, I want to look at, you know, a little bit of the histor historical point uh, of what Jabez was going through. And I want to uh, want to look at uh the spiritual connotations uh, that this prayer uh, has for us today and the reason why I think it is important uh, to you know follow some of the principles of the prayer of Jabez and so historically uh, just to go over some some of the facts that we went over Sunday uh, as you will see in verse number uh, nine I think it is that uh, Jabez's mother his name uh, simply means pain and sorrow. His name means pain and sorrow. Uh, it is quite possible uh, reading the tradition, reading rather not the traditions, but reading the history and things of that nature. We, we don't know for sure, but it's quite possible that Jabez may have caused his mother more pain at birth than he did his brothers. And so she, she named him after pain. She named him after sorrow. And she named him Jabez. And also during the uh, historic times, these names were prophetic. So by her naming him Jabez, it, it, it could have uh, it, it, it could have entitled him or not entitled him, but it could have led him prophetically to cause pain and sorrow or endure pain and sorrow rather uh, throughout the duration of his life. So what do we do? when we've been tagged? What do we do when we've been pegged with a name or a characteristic or a title that, that, that's not conducive to who God calls us? As we said on Sunday, that is what his mother called us, but what does God call us? What did God call him? 
And it's the same thing on today as we look at uh, the spiritual side of things. People call us different names. People label us different things, but it does not line up to who, who God has created us to be. And so there's got to be a point where you draw the line in the sand. You know, am I going to, you know, be who God called me to be or am I going to be who people has labeled and what people expect me to be? I'm pretty sure that there's someone uh, watching the video now who who didn't, you know, get a fair shake. No one gave you a chance in the beginning and people, you know, always, you know, the things that I hope teachers don't say anymore, but things teachers used to say when I was growing up, you know, they would label a child uh, that they wasn't going to turn out to be anything. They would label a child a student just by the way they looked or just by the attitude they may have had as a child, you know, you, not knowing what type of home the child came from or anything of that nature. And they would label the child a certain thing. Um, but, you know, it's good to see where that person outgrew uh, the expectations of naysayers and negative people in their lives. So this is basically what Jabez is doing when he prays out, uh, you know, for God to bless him indeed. I understand, you know, what I've been called. I understand what I've been labeled. I understand, you know, what has been predicted of me, but I am not going to, to pray that those things come to pass. I'm going to pray that the God of my salvation, as Jabez did, I'm going to pray that the God of my salvation bless me uh, beyond what I have been labeled. Bless me beyond the restrictions that people expect from me. And so the Bible says here that Jabez does something that stands out beyond his brothers. The Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. I don't, I don't, I don't know what all, I didn't pay attention to look to see what all the other brothers names were and what all of the other brothers names meant. But I do know that the Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. What made Jabez more honorable than his brothers? His name meant pain. His name meant sorrow, meaning that, 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 you know, he wasn't going to reach the glass ceiling. He, he didn't, he wasn't expected to do or be anyone great. And so, and so what makes him more honorable than his brothers? I think the topic on Sunday was uh, what was going to cause you to stand out from everybody else. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers because he prayed. That's what stands out in the scriptures, different uh, from Jabez and everything else. Uh, everyone else, rather, was the fact that Jabez prayed. And then when we look at the prayer of Jabez for the next few moments, we look at the prayer of Jabez. And like I said, it's not a prayer for prosperity, but it's a prayer for God's promises to come into fruition. It's a prayer for uh, God's protection and provision during the process of the promise coming to pass. We, are, we must understand that God has promised us some great things. God has promised us you know, he has promised us prosperity. Uh, remember Deuteronomy uh, 8 and 18, it says, you know, it was it was God's hand that caused us to prosper. You know, God has given us the ability to prosper. And so we have to remember that he's given us the, the ability to obtain wealth. He's given us all of these things. Let me go to the book. I just want to read that because we, we did preach that the other day. Um, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Had a brain freeze there for a second. Just bear with me for a moment. Deuteronomy. Because I didn't plan on turning here, but I want to go to it. And I want to read it to you again. Uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Where the Bible says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who giveth thee power to get well. It was God who gave you the power to the power to get will that he may establish his covenant in which he sworn to the fathers on this day. And so, you know, God's protection and God's provision rather can lead to prosperity. But instead of praying for the prosperity, let's pray for God's provision and, you know, not not limit what God can do for us. And that's one thing. Let me let me let me just throw that in again. Don't don't place a limit on who you are, who you've been called and what people expect of you don't that don't allow that to put a limit 
on what you believe God can do for you. Let me say that again, and, and maybe in a, in a more plain way. Don't allow other people's expectations, people who are down here on earth just like you, people who can't add anything or take anything away from who you are unless you let them or allow them. Don't let them get into your head. Don't get into your own head um, believing what people say, believing what people expect of you. When you when you confirm uh, affirm in your own spirit that, you know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And that if God before me, it means more than the world against me, then don't settle for what people expect of you. Don't settle for what people have titled you. Don't settle for, you know, what 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 people say you're able to do and what you're not able to do. You know, instead, use that as fire and, and, and motivation. If there's anybody in your life that's telling you what you cannot do, that's contradicting what God said you can do, contradicting what your dreams are, then use that for fuel. Don't use it uh, to be motivated to suffer lack or, or not be, you know, whatever you want to be or fulfill your dreams. Use that for fuel and motivation, not just to show them that you can do it. Who cares what, if, if they see it or not, but to prove to yourself that there's no limit to what you can do as long as you have God on your side. And so the scripture in, in 4 and 10, Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him in sorrow. Now, here is, is where uh, the paradigm shifts, because we see here, the only thing we see here about Jabez in, in this particular scripture is, is the negative. All we see is that, you know, his mother, well, not just negative, but we see that his mother, uh, you know, called him Jabez because she bared him in sorrow. And that we know that his name means sorrow and we know that his name means pain. But. He was more honorable by God, not by the people, but by God, he was more honorable than his brothers. And here we see where Jabez lifts up his voice. And the Bible says, and Jabez called on the God of Israel. He called on the God of Israel. Anytime that there are things that are not going to not go, not they're, they're not conducive into what you're believing or, you know, the obstacles in your life, the hurdles that you have to jump, um, things that are in your path, because there are things that are going to happen that, 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 that you won't be able to handle under your own strength. And you're going to need the power of God. Look at what Jabez did. Jabez couldn't change his name. Jabez couldn't change uh, the expectations. Jabez couldn't change the prophecy that his mother prophesied on him by naming him Jabez, naming him Sorrow. So what does he do? He turned to the higher power. And so here, here's the, uh, one of the spiritual connotations that I wanted to go over on today. When, when, whenever you realize that, that you've done all you can, you see, the Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a paraclete, it's a helper. That means it's going to assist you to go beyond what you can do yourself. You see, and I said that to say this, you, you have to give an effort. You know, God is going to help you, but you have to give uh, the effort. Show God that, that you are trying. Show God that you are putting forth the effort. And even though, you know, you may be over your head in some things, you need to show God that you're trying to come out of this hole. Show God that you're trying to dig out of it. Amen. Um, you know, if, if you have, you know, issues in your life, let's talk about health. We always talk about health. Let's talk about health or, or, or finances. When you know that you're in a bind in finances, you know you're in a bind in your health. You know, when you ask God to help you, you're asking him to assist you along the way when you've done all you can. Amen. So you, you before you ask for help and believe for help, show God that you are genuinely concerned in doing all that you can or doing your part. And you're asking the Holy Spirit to help guide you along. You can't ask God to help you uh, mature in Christ and help you, you know, change your ways through the word of God. If you never partake in the word of God, if you're never reading the word, you're never studying the word, you're never meditating on the word. So why would you ask God to help you in the word? You need to ask God to help you to the word. Amen. And so Jabez understands and realizes that there's a need in his life 
that he cannot accomplish without the aid of God's spirit. And so this is where uh, we see in the prayer, we see in verse number 10, Jabez called on the name of the God of Israel, just like the model prayer, our father, which art in heaven. He called on not a God, but he called on the God. And you see here where Jesus uh, gave the disciples the model prayer. You see it throughout the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. The model prayer is effective. Use it. And he says, saying, oh, that thou would bless me indeed. Understand, he's already been labeled sorrow. He's already been labeled pain. And so he does not expect the blessings to come from his mother. He does not expect the blessings to come from his brethren. He does not expect the blessings to come from anyone else in the same situation. So why do we go first to people who are struggling just like us? Why do we find comfort in other people that are struggling? Why do we find comfort in other people that are sick? Why do we find comfort in other people who, who are financially cha uh, challenged? Why do we find comfort in these people? Why, why don't we do be more like Jabez and find comfort in the one who can deliver us from all of these things? Find comfort in the one who has all power. Find comfort in the one that is sovereign, fair and just in all of his ways. Find comfort in, in, in the God of our salvation. You know, take it to Jesus. So here's what he's saying. He said that thou would bless me indeed. I stand in need. You wouldn't ask God to bless you indeed unless there was a need in your life. And, and, and Jabez recognized that not only does he have need now, but what he is about to embark on, he is going to need the power of God to help him along the way. Now let me let me stress that to you right now. Those that are listening to myself and to those that are listening, you, we will need the power, the strength, the grace of God. In this next in this next thing that we're about to go through, this next thing that we're about to encounter, you're going to need them. So why wait until things get ridiculously bad to get down on bend that need to pray to God? Ask God to bless you now. Ask God to bless you going in. Uh, I'm not even going to say a season of challenges or troubles or things of that nature, but ask God to bless you going into whatever you're going to. Somebody may even be going into a season of, 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 like I said, wealth and prosperity, but you're still going to have to have God to bless you even in that season. That's, that's, that, I think that's where we come up short because we think when things are going well, uh, we stop praying as much as we did when things were not going well. Um, you know, not, not to be funny, but I am right here, but a serious, you know, tax season is coming. I, I guarantee you people are not praying uh, as fervently during tax season for finances and, and, and financial liter, uh, literacy and, you know, what to do with your money. I bet you don't. I bet people are not praying as fervently as they did before tax season. That's just that's just human nature. That's just a proclivity of human beings. We pray fervently. And when the blessing comes, we slack off in our prayers. So I challenge you, even in a good season, somebody I'm talking to is in a good season right now where, where you know, you're in that land where you can eat without scarcity. You're in that land overflow with milk and honey. You're in that land where everything you need is there in abundance. I challenge you to keep praying as fervently as you did before you got there as you're praying now. Bless me indeed, whatever situation I am in, if I if things are well, Bless me indeed. If things are not so well, bless me indeed. And, and he says, enlarge my territory. When he says enlarge my territory historically and physically, when he says enlarge my territory, it is quite possible, as it's been studied, it's quite possible that he is, is, is referring to the Canaanites that are going to have to be defeated when they go into the promised land. And I did point on that, uh, hit on that point for a minute on Sunday, that even though God has made the promise to you, it does not mean everything is going to fall in your lap and everything is going to be easy peasy. There are going to be some challenging times in fulfilling in God, fulfilling his promise, uh, because there there are enemies that are lurking 
They want to distract you. They want to kill, steal and destroy. But I am so glad that Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Avoid the one that comes to kill, steal and destroy. This is why we need God to bless us indeed, because, you know, the, the, the enemy is coming like a flood. The Bible says the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them, meaning that, that God is claiming us when the enemy comes in like a flood. God is claiming us. He's putting up a state saying that this child is mine. And so we need God to bless us indeed, regardless of, uh, of the situation, regardless of what we're going through. And so it is believed that when he was saying, you know, enlarge my territory, uh, when he called on the God of Israel because the Israelites were uh, to to possess the land of Canaan, to possess this land of abundance. And God is saying that although you are called, I believe that we are called into a land of abundance in Christ Jesus. That's why he said I came to John might have life and have it more abundantly. I believe that, you know, there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be battles that we have to fight. The enemy is going to throw, you know, things at you to deter and distract you. He's going to make it seem like it's not worth it. Amen. Some of you are so close to your miracle. Some of you are so close to your blessing. Some of you are so close to the breakthrough that you have been believing God for. But you gave up too early because uh, you, you, you let the deceiver uh, talk you out of, of going through what you needed to go through. And so he's saying, enlarge my territory, you know, scatter the enemies, let God arise and your enemies be scattered. He's saying scatter these enemies because the enemy is still in, in, in possession of, of what God has promised you and the enemy has to be defeated. Understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, before you start looking at me funny, uh, God has made you some promises, but the territory needs to be clear at all. God has made you some promises, but the territory still need to be clear at all. It's, it's just like, you know, God promised you uh, that you was going to build a house on this land. You bought the land, you bought the lot, but you can't build a house because of the trees. Amen. The trees need to be cleared off. There's some enemies on the land. There's some enemies on, on, on some things, prophetically speaking, and understand where I'm coming from, what I'm saying, where I'm going. Uh, God has promised you some some things in your life and they're yours, but it doesn't look like well, what God promised. Amen. Like the land, you see the house, you see the vision, you see the yard, the swing sets and the cars and all of this stuff that, that, you know, God has promised you. But when you look at it with the physical eye, all you see is a bunch of trees. Amen. So, so, you know, sharpen your vision, write it and make it plain. Amen. It may not look like what God said it was going to be, but when he enlarged your territory, when he enlarged your coast, as, as Jabez is saying, you know, everything will start becoming sharper. And as they become sharper, it's going to increase your faith. And once it increase your faith, you'll start moving and acting towards uh, what God has promised you. And also spiritually, have you prayed for God to enlarge your territory spiritually? What is him enlarging my territory spiritually? Him enlarging your territory spiritually is giving you a broader capacity to be more like him on earth. You, you, you know, that that's that's something that we may not think about as much as other things. And like I said, this is not only a materialistic prayer. This is not only a prayer of uh, a material prosperity, but spiritually as well. So in your prayer time during Lent season and during your your closet prayer time, ask God to enlarge your capacity to love. Ask God to you know enlarge your capacity to care for people. Ask him to enlarge your capacity to give of yourself and pray for one another. Like I said uh, weeks ago, the, the reason why Paul said one another is meaning it is to uh, reciprocate. The love is supposed to go around the room, not just me to you, but me to you and back to me is to reciprocate. And so, you know, when is the last time or have you asked God to enlarge your territory or enlarge your coast, enlarge your capacity to be more like him, enlarge your capacity to be more of an extension of his grace here on earth, enlarge uh, my territory. And then he says he has God to keep his hand upon them. Uh, the hand of the Lord in uh, biblical terms is his power and his presence. So this is what Jabez was saying when he says that thine hand might be with me 
that thou wouldest keep me from evil. He wants God's presence and God's power to always be with him. Now, in order to have God's presence and power with you always, you have to stay out of places where God's power and presence is not welcome. Oh, you know who I'm talking to. You know if I'm talking to you, you know what I'm talking about. If you want God's presence and power to always be with you, as Jabez said, then then there are some things that you can't entertain because there are some places that, that God's power and presence is not recognized. God's power and presence is not first and foremost. And like I said, we all know, you know, situations, places, people and things that I'm talking about. So when Jabez is saying, you know, keep your hand upon me, you know, that I, I know that's the script, the, the words of the song. Let me see what the Bible says here. He says, enlarge my coast and thy hand. When he says that thy hand might be with me and keep me from evil, you know, you can't ask God's presence and power to be with you and then you entertain evil. You can't ask God's power and presence to be with you and then you run to uh, the evil place or, or, or where the evil is taking place. So when you're asking God that his hand will stay with you, you're praying that his power and his presence is with you all of the time and for his power and presence to be with you all the time. I, I, one of my affirmations in the morning, and I'm going to wrap it up. But one of my affirmations in the morning is I tell myself that I have the power to resist temptation. It's not the power of my own. It's my will to resist temptation and, and prayerfully through my self disciplines, I can resist temptation. But when I say I have power to resist temptation, I'm not saying that it's power that I've given myself. Now that I think about it, it's more like Jabez was praying. And, you know, that this is fresh revelation that God has given me at this very moment. That's why I'm smiling and I'm happy and excited, because when the word of God comes to to life, when the word of God shows that that it is living and breathing in your life, uh, I don't know how you can not get happy and excited about it. But when I pray that I have the power to resist temptation, what I'm praying is I have the hand of God on my life. I have the presence of God through me and around me that gives me the power, gives me the ability rather to resist temptation. Have you ever been tempted? And, and before you give in, I don't care how strong or how burning the desire is, but before you give in, stop what you're doing and pray for God's power and pray for his presence. And I will guarantee you that that lust, that, that lustful urge that you're fighting so hard against will start to subdue, you know, again, let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Amen. This is the conclusion of today. And as we know, the Bible concludes here in verse 10, and it said that uh, God granted him which he requested. The reason why I believe God granted him what he requested is because what he requested was after the will of God in his life. He, like I said, this is not a, a, a prayer of material things. This is not a prayer of material prosperity. This is a prayer of God's um, provision and protection. This is a prayer for God's provision and protection. That's what the word blessed mean. The word blessed means provision and protection, God's provision and protection. That's what blessed me. And so, you know, in a nutshell, when he said, you know, bless me indeed, that was the whole prayer. When he said, bless me indeed, he said, Lord, provide for me and protect for me and protect me. That was the whole prayer in a nutshell. Bless me indeed. He could have stopped right there. Oh, Lord, bless me indeed. Provide and protect. That's, that's all we need. When we have God's protection and provision, what else could you, what else can we ask for? Amen. But, you know, our role again, this is this is a conditional will of God. God is going to do everything that he said he was going to do. God is doing everything that he said he is going to do and he will do everything that he said he will do. But the condition is our obedience to him. So how obedient are you to God in, 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 in order to receive, you know, the goodness of this land in order to receive him 
and you know to be a gateway for for the kingdom to come here on earth as it is in heaven i'm going to leave there uh, i pray that you would come join us for our live worship on 10 o'clock sunday mornings 54 53 cascade road cascade virginia uh, where we are committed to christ and our mission is to enhance the quality of life through and by the preaching and teaching of God's word. Hope to see you soon and God bless you. Stay strong during Lent season and keep one another in prayer.